I want to show you a really cool fact about integer partitions, but first let me define what a partition is so we can all be on the same page. So a partition is a weakly decreasing sequence of positive integers. OK, so for example, uh, and we usually use lambda to denote the partition. So lambda equals 4, 3, 3, 1. Let's say maybe 1 at the end. 4, 3, 3, 1, 1 uh, is a partition. And the number of parts of a partition, this would be 5. And its largest part always appears in location 1. So its largest part here is 4. And so the question we're going to work on today, and I encourage you to try it on your own first, is how many partitions have m or fewer parts such that each part is at most n. OK? How many partitions have m or fewer parts such that each part is at most n? So just to clarify, this is a partition with five parts where each part is at most four. But it's also a partition that has you know, uh, fewer than seven parts where each part is at most 10. OK? So it satisfies a number of, of these conditions. So pause the video. Try it on your own. Come back when you're ready to see my solution. And I'm telling you, I think my solution is pretty slick, so you won't want to miss it. All right, welcome back. So to each partition, you can assign what's known as a Young diagram. So the Young diagram is a northwest justified uh, array of boxes. So the Young diagram for lambda would have four boxes, three boxes, three boxes, one box, and one box. OK, and notice that this length here is the number of parts of lambda, and this length here is the length of its longest part. OK, so we can restate our question. Instead of saying how many partitions have m or fewer parts such that each part is at most n, we could say how many Young diagrams fit in an m, sorry, by, in an n by m box. Right, so just to clarify, so here's our drawing again. So suppose m was much bigger than 5 and n was much bigger than 4, it would look like this. Let's make it a rectangle so you can tell it's a rectangle. OK, so that's what our question uh, simplifies to or is restated as. So something to note is the boundary of our Young diagram is a lattice path from 0, 0 to the point nm using east and north steps. So let's write that down. So note that the boundary of the Young diagram. I'll just call it YD for short. Is a lattice path with steps of 
one zero and zero one, right, north steps or east steps. So if we just look at this boundary here, you can see it's north steps or east steps. from the origin to the point NM. Okay, and so, and it's not hard to check that given a lattice path, so let's say we had a lattice path that goes from 0, 0 to uh, 5, 3. Okay, so given a lattice path, uh, let's say it goes north, and then a couple of east steps, you could see that there is a partition associated with it. So this, this lattice path is associated with the partition 5-4. It has at most three parts, with biggest part at most five. I'm like black pen, blue pen. Okay, and so it's easy to see, or hopefully I'm convincing you, that young diagrams, our young diagrams, are in bijection with these lattice paths. Okay, that's great. So now the question, instead of counting partitions with a certain property, instead of counting young diagrams with a certain property, what we're going to do is count the number of lattice paths from 0, 0 to the point M, sorry, NM. So our question becomes count number of lattice paths. from 0, 0 to nm. OK, and believe it or not, this is like a super easy combinatorics question. The total number of steps, so there are, how many total steps does each lattice path have? Well, you need n of them east and m north, no matter what. So there are n plus m total steps, n of which are east, OK? So out of the n plus m total steps, you need to choose the n of them that will be east steps. The remainder will be north. So the total is n plus m choose n. And that's the final answer. So the total number of partitions that have m or fewer parts, such that each part is at most n, is n plus m choose n. How cool is that? Usually, you don't expect partitions and binomial coefficients to be related to each other, but in this case, they are. All right, well, let me know what you think about the video. Do you like these combinatorics questions? I got a ton of them. I mean, it's what my PhD is in, so I got an infinite supply of problems to work through. Um, yeah, let me know any thoughts you have in the comments, and I'll try to respond to as many as I can. All right, see you later. Bye-bye.